Hey guys, it's Will from TestJet. I'm at SCAA 2015 in Seattle, Washington. Uh, and I'm here with Jeremy from Blossom. Jeremy, we, we met, uh, I think, three years ago when you brought an early prototype of this machine by our office and let us do, do, see a test run. Um, I'm really excited to see what looks like a final machine here. Uh, that's right, it is a final machine. Uh, we've been working hard over the last few years, uh, drinking lots and lots of coffee, which helps put in those extra hours, and uh, tested. This is our sixth generation design, and we've put it into production with a manufacturer in Japan, uh, and a global distribution now, and it's uh, it's been a wild ride. So for people who are familiar with Blossom, I think we should run down like what exactly, is, what, what's your brewing process, what makes it special, and why people, why people should be interested in it. Absolutely. Uh, I call it a precision coffee brewing machine because our goal when we created this machine was to create a system that could provide a new level of control over coffee brewing. And as engineers, our philosophy, of course, started with looking at coffee brewing as chemistry and treating the system, uh, uh, treating coffee brewing as a system that could be controlled. Uh, so that was our inspiration getting into this. It's about isolating variables and controlling them independently and precisely. Uh, so that I can go through the main variables. Yeah, right? absolutely. Sure. Uh, so when you're looking at coffee brewing, you're essentially dissolving coffee flavors into water. Uh, so I always try to tell people to think about it like that. Think about dissolving something. Like I give Kool-Aid as an example, of course, uh, usually. So you take Kool-Aid and you add it to water. You always was it going to smash through the wall? I'm just. <laughs> I haven't seen him here yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, so if you pour your Kool-Aid into your water or sugar into water, you stir it and it dissolves more quickly, right? If the water's hot, it dissolves more quickly. Um, sometimes if you don't stir it or use hot water, you can just let it sit. It'll dissolve over time. Um, ratio matters as well. If you've got a tiny little bit and a lot of water, that's going to dissolve more quickly than a lot with a small amount of water. Uh, and then particle size. If you have a, you know, a big chunk of something you're trying to dissolve, it'll dissolve more slowly than if you have a bunch of tiny little particles. Uh, so that all these principles apply to coffee brewing as well. So those main variables for coffee brewing uh, is temperature, uh, stirring, ratio of coffee to water, grind size, and brew time. And so that's where we were looking at it fundamentally as chemistry, as these are the variables that are impacting the dissolving of flavor compounds. And then we designed this brewer around the ability to do all of those independently and precisely. So can you run us through the bits and pieces of the brewer and let us let us see how, how you affect the, 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 the variables? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So our philosophy in designing this product, again, was give, to give that level, uh, level of precise control, but to do it with an interaction that was uh, still very manual and familiar. Uh, so we, we kind of came into this saying, we understand thermodynamics, we understand engineering, uh, but we there is no one answer to coffee, there is no one right way or one best way to brew every cup, and we want to provide a solution that's versatile and powerful. Uh, and so that's what we came to here. Um, I can kind of go through the general yeah, building blocks perfect. of the system. Yeah. The, the most important part of this coffee maker is what we call the brew group, which is where the coffee brewing occurs. Uh, of course, the most important part of any coffee brewing system is where the coffee and water are being mixed. So we spent a lot of our time thinking about that. Uh, the way this brew group works and how it helps you separate those variables is it's a, it's a full immersion system that's also temperature controlled. Um, so if you take a look inside here, you can see that uh, we have this portafilter. It's a very large portafilter. It has four wings on it. This was designed actually to be thermally conductive and to conduct heat underneath the coffee as it's brewing. And if you look inside the brew group, you'll notice it actually looks really simple. It's just a tube. Uh, that's all you see on the outside. The real trick is the thermodynamic system on the inside. So in, wrapped around that tube is a heating element, and embedded into the tube is a uh, thermocouple. And we're taking readings from the thermocouple and applying energy to that heating element to do a PID feedback control loop on the system. So this whole brew group as a structure is staying at a single temperature. And that's what we were looking at when designing the portafilter, the bayonet ring, and that tube, is to make sure heat moves efficiently throughout the system in a way that there are no hot spots on the coffee that you've got as close to an isothermal environment as possible. So it's not just the tube, it's also the portafilter. And then I assume you're heating your water before it goes in as well? That's right, yeah. And uh, on the back side here, uh, all of these brewers are shipping with this glass window on the back, so you can see some of the really awesome high-precision guts. Uh, so we have a boiler back there that's also PID controlled. Uh, I kind of call that the easy part, because <laughs> there's a lot of coffee makers out there that have PID controlled boilers, but this is the only one that also has a, a PID controlled thermally heated brew group that maintains single degree Fahrenheit for any brew time. Well, and since you're essentially doing, uh, uh, it's like a machine assisted French press, right? Uh, yeah, that's one way to think about it. I often describe it uh, as sort of AeroPress meets Chemex meets Clover. Uh, so we drew inspiration from a lot of different areas to create a product that could be familiar, but also precise. 
And, and when you when you look at something like a press where you're leaving the coffee in for two to four minutes, maybe even a little bit longer, depending on what you like, the maintaining temperature stability in the pot is a, is a benefit, I assume. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So if you're brewing, uh, let's say, a French press, and you pour your hot water in there, you start at 205 Fahrenheit, after four minutes, you're going to be down in the 170 Fahrenheit range. So that temperature's cooling logarithmically. What that means is your coffee is extracting across this whole range of temperatures. At the higher temperature, it could be extracting bitter compounds. At the lower temperature, it could be extracting sour compounds. And what you end up with is, is this blend in your cup. What this brewer does is it's never so hot that it extracts bitter compounds, and it's never so cool that it extracts sour compounds. You're really able to hit like a like a laser on the exact point that's going to work best for that coffee, and we found that every coffee is different. So, um, so then you you've added that that configurability to the control panel as well, so that people build recipes uh, for their particular for each roast of coffee that they make. And and can we run through that a little bit? I'm interested to see how that works. Yeah, absolutely. So the recipes are this really big idea for coffee brewing. Uh, so coffee is a fresh prepared beverage. You know, you like a nice fresh hot cup of coffee, but the problem with freshness and preparing it fresh for the customer is that every cup ends up being brewed a little bit differently by other pieces of equipment. Uh, those variables that you're brewing with are going to change the taste, and that means the coffee roasters don't have final control over quality to the customer uh, if they're serving it anywhere other than their own cafe with their own trained staff. So that's where the recipes come in with this product, is it's a bit of responsive hardware that can be taking a, creating this wide variety of environments. But you can also give it a recipe that's tagged to your coffee so that it can recreate the exact environment needed to make that coffee taste right. Uh, so that's the vision, is that a coffee roaster creates a recipe for their own coffee, and then on, no matter where this Blossom Brewer is put, you can be recreating that exact taste anywhere in the world. And then the last part is that um, a lot of people like, uh, it seems like about half the people like a metal filter, lots of oil, lots of body. The rest of the people like a paper filter, no body, yeah. you know, no oil. Um, you guys do both, right? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, there, let me show you. So we're using these um, really high quality uh, lab grade paper. It's an oxygen cleanse paper. It's a uh, People usually notice that it's pretty thick, but that's because it's sort of a loose weave, so the fibers are not super smashed together. What that does is it allows it to trap fine, so we can produce these really clean cups of coffee when we're brewing with this paper disc. Um, and so the paper would just go in there like that. Um, or if you want to brew with metal, all the portafilters come with a metal filter pre-installed. It's really a matter of personal preference and whatever's going to work best for that coffee. And then cleanup is as simple as taking the portafilter out of the bottom and just jamming the plunger all the way through? That's right, yeah. So it's designed that the uh, you get this cake of coffee sitting on top of the portafilter and you use this plunger. The plunger clears the walls as it goes through. The cake lands in there and then you just knock it out just like a, you know an espresso machine. That's so great. It's, it's, inter it's an interaction that's very familiar to anyone who's used an espresso equipment before. So uh, the Blossom is for, for cafes primarily though, right? Yeah, that's actually an interesting question. It, we designed it for cafes uh, and we went super hardcore on the engineering as you know, I've kind of been talking about because we wanted to give that level of control to coffee professionals and cafe owners. We've actually had this really interesting response where you know, cafes love it, but then there's a segment of private individuals who are really excited about it as well. Uh, and it's a, it's a pricey machine, so it's not for everyone, but we've got some customers who have them in their homes who are really happy with it. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jeremy. If people want to find out more, where can they go? Uh, they can come to our website, blossomcoffee.com. Great. And we'll have more from SCAA on Tested soon. See you guys later.